everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about buying land. Yep, it's beautiful out here. If you're thinking about moving to Alaska or you already live in Alaska, Ryan's gonna tell us a little bit about cheap way to get land. Buying land in Alaska, you have to be careful. Look behind me. There's this big open area back behind me here. And you can see because it's, uh, we're in the winter time obviously, so if you're buying land specifically in the winter time, you gotta be really careful of places like this because that is a marshy wetland out there. You can see the trees that we have growing out here are what we call black spruce. And if you see black spruce growing, you know you've got some wet ground. So that's one indicator that you need to be careful of what you're looking at. These trees right back in here, these small dwarf looking trees, that's all indicators of bad ground. So you gotta be careful. Look behind me here and you'll see open ground, a little bit of trees back there. So you've got marsh ground out in here and then in the trees you can see they're dwarf little dwarf trees if you can look back there there's a little bit of a hill that hill as it, the ground rises up would be the only buildable ground here so if you're looking for a piece of land you got to be really careful about these low marshy sections especially if you're looking for ground in the winter time where everything's frozen you don't get a good indication that's why one recommendation i have for you if you're buying land in alaska is come look at it during spring thaw during breakup season that will be at its peak for water and give you a good idea what it's going to be like year-round. So with today's world climate and what's going on today, it seems like there's a push for people to become more rural, pushing further and further out, buying land, homesteading. There's a big push for the off-grid movement. Okay, so how do you buy land in Alaska? Well, there's several ways you can look for property or pieces of land, and I'm talking about raw land. If you wanna buy a house with a little bit of, of uh, acreage, find a realtor, lots of realtors around that can help you out. But when I'm talking about getting off grid or being out in the bush, or at least out in rural community where you can homestead, you don't have a lot of laws and rules and regulations, and you still have some freedoms. So how do you find that? So to purchase land in Alaska, there are a few resources at your disposal. Now you can go to the traditional method and search Craigslist, uh, Zillow, Realtor.com. You can actually get a Realtor. But one of the difficulties of purchasing, and I'm speaking of raw land, you want a homestead or go off grid in Alaska, you want to purchase raw land to build on. The difficulty with that is bank loans. It is very difficult to get a bank to loan on raw land. So what do you do? I have a solution for you. Stay tuned and we're gonna talk about it. Three programs we have in Alaska that are gonna allow you to purchase land cheap with no or little money down. Here in Alaska, people often think that you can still homestead, but that's not true. Homesteading in Alaska ended in the mid 90s to, or the mid 80s to early 90s. So one of the number one questions I get asked is how can I buy land? I'm young or uh, I don't have any money and I'm tired of working. I just want to buy some land. I want to start a homestead. And so my first answer is this, work hard, save your money, buy it a little at a time, make a plan and then move off, off grid or move to your homestead, whatever you choose to do. But for young people or someone who maybe doesn't have the financial wherewithal to get out there right now, I think I might have something for you. So the state of Alaska 
is 300, approximately 365 million acres of land. 95% of that land is public. Now, public is one thing, but the federal government owns 61% of Alaska, so that leaves a little slice of the pie left for us to buy. About 100 million acres of Alaska is state owned and could potentially be up for sale. So the Alaska Department of Natural Resources, Alaska DNR, has three programs that are pretty cool. So the first program I want to talk about is the auction, the land auction. Alaska DNR has designated certain sections of land throughout Alaska in different regions to put up for sale for Alaska residents to purchase. Again, Alaska residents. You have to be a resident of Alaska, prove your residency to purchase through the land auction. So the land auction happens about happens once a year. But after the land auction is completed, any parcels that did not sell are put on the over-the-counter program. The over-the-counter program, I'm out here in the middle of nowhere, walking on the snow machine trail, it's pretty cool. Anyways, the over-the-counter program is eligible for Alaska residents and non-residents. So, the trick is this, when an auction is done, what the, on this uh, auction list for residents, it goes to the over-the-counter. The first offering of over-the-counter sales is at 30% above assessed value. 30% above assessed value. Now, if you have a piece of land that you see on that auction site that's just like primo and exactly what you're looking for, I, go for it. But the second land offering, I think it's up on the first land offering for about uh, two weeks maybe a little bit longer but then when the second land offering comes out it's at 15 percent so they lower it above the assessed value of the land the third land offering it gets listed for assessed value and that's how me and vaughn purchased our land in toke we actually got on the auction we won a 10 acre parcel on the auction <clears throat> when we went to go look at it we knew the area when we went to go look at it we just weren't too keen on the piece of property it was going to be hard to access and really the clincher was we found the 30 acres that we bought uh, that you guys see us working on now because it was right by that 10 acres and I didn't realize it was for sale it was my own mistake so we called DNR and we actually uh, checked on that 30 acres it was over the counter sales third offering so it was at assessed value and they do a special uh they do a special thing also on dnr and um military veterans with a dd214 once in your lifetime you can buy a parcel of state offered land at a 25 percent percent discount now there's some calculations to that it's not 25 percent off the actual price they subtract some costs they have for surveying the land and all that and it could be as much as five thousand dollars and then uh off the top and then 25 percent less so we ended up uh somewhere around thirty two thousand dollars for the 30 acres that we bought so with that said we've got over-the-counter sales land auctions first then over-the-counter sales and then there's also the recreational cabin staking program the recreational cabin staking program is a little different People always talk about, oh, you can still homestead in Alaska. Well, no, you can't. So, um, what the recreational cabin staking program is, is it's mostly very remote land. It's, it's out there where you can access it by airplane or snow machine or boat. It's out in Bush, Alaska, where a lot of the other auction and the over-the-counter sales, a lot of that land is still road accessible. So the recreational cabin sale works like this, or cabin staking program. You have to apply. 
And I don't know, I'll have to check and I'll look on the website if it's, if it's eligible for residents only. But you have to apply, win a lottery. If you win the lottery, you then get to, the, the state um, shows you a section of land that they have sectioned off for the staking program. You can go out there, stake an area off that you like, and the gist of it is you stake an area off that you like, <clears throat> get the GPS coordinates of the four corners, come back. The state will basically lease it to you until they've had the opportunity to go out and survey it. Once they've gone out and surveyed it, and a few things happen in there, but basically once they've gone out and surveyed it, they put an assessment to it, and you pay the state what they assessed, the value of the land to be. Oh, that's pretty cool. Out here on a lake. <clears throat> pretty cool lake behind me there. So how do we get land in Alaska cheap? I said I was gonna show you how to get land in Alaska cheap or with little to no money down. Well, with these programs, you've got the um, over-the-counter sales, the auction, all these programs. And the beauty of it is this, the state of Alaska will give you a loan on the land. You say, what? Yeah, the state of Alaska will give you a loan on the land. So you select a parcel, let's say, on the over-the-counter list. You've got an over-the-counter sales. You went and looked. You see a parcel of land you like. Say it's a five-acre piece of land, and it's uh, $5,000. Let's say $40,000. Be reasonable. It's a nice piece of land. What you do is you get go to DNR. you got to put down... 5%, 5 to 10% up front. That's it. 5 to 10% up front. Then you tell them you want to get, uh, you want to finance. They will finance it, no questions asked. As long as you're in good standing with the, uh, I believe you have to be in good standing with, say, your taxes and you can't have defaulted on a state loan previously. So there's a few stipulations, but overall, the, for most people, it's a guarantee. They won't do a credit check. They don't see anything. They, it's not like getting a bank loan. They will give you a loan, and the cost of that loan is 3% over the prime rate. So whatever the prime rate is for interest rates, add 3%. I think when we bought our land, we did, uh, we did a land sale, or we did a financing, and it was 7% interest. And so, and it's what it does is <clears throat> for us, it was just delaying upfront costs. We ended up paying it off. And that's the beauty of it too, is you can get this loan through the state and there's no fees for paying it off early. So we just paid it off. We didn't want to, uh, once we had the money, we kind of stabilized out in our finances. We were like, okay, let's just buy the land off for outright. But if you can't do that, you can get a 3% above prime interest rate on the land and then depending on the price of the land so two thousand dollars or less you have to buy it cash money anything over two thousand it gets between five and twenty year loan that program is fantastic for people that maybe don't have the money up front but it's no problem making a payment so right there that is your solution to buying land you want to go off grid, you want to start a homestead, Alaska has the programs in place to get you out there. Now there's a couple other things you can do. Alaska State Mental Health actually has tracts of land throughout the state that they were given and they, are, they manage that land to sustain the program. And by that I mean they might do timber sales, mineral rights sales, whatever the case may be, but how it works out or what works out for us as normal citizens is that they also do land sales. And the Alaska Mental Health works on the same premise 
as the state of Alaska land sales. They do an over-the-counter sale. They also do an auction. And they also offer a loan at 3% over prime. 3% over prime. So you have a couple options there to get into land, even if you have bad credit or you have little to no money, as long as you can make the payment. The trick is this, you miss a payment, the state repos the land and takes everything that's on it. You don't, uh, basically if you made any improvements, you built a house, whatever the case may be, and you default on the loan, they get to take it all. That would kinda not be cool. So, pretty cool programs the state offers. I think it's good to look into. It's something worth looking into. If you're interested in the state of Alaska, think about that. 365 million acres. This state is huge. 95.8% of Alaska is public land. The lar next largest state in the union, Texas, has only like 4% public land. Think of the opportunities that that has for Alaska. Monta a state like Montana, it's only 37% public land. 37%. So the state of Alaska, 95.8% public land. Now I already told you that the federal government owns 61% of the state, but that leaves a huge section of land available. The question is, do you want to be out in Bush, Alaska? Or do you want to be on the road system? There's a lot of things to consider when moving to Alaska and buying land. <clears throat> this is a harsh climate. I think it's negative 10 degrees today. And uh, that's nothing. It can get to negative 60 and lower in the wintertime. Well, what a lot of people don't know is that Alaska has absolutely gorgeous summers. Beautiful summers. There's a lot of positives about Alaska. The freedoms. I've talked about this before, but did you know in the state of Alaska, you buy land and there's several, lots of areas in the state of Alaska where you buy land and you own it. What I mean by that? No property taxes. Now that doesn't go for the whole state, but there's huge sections of the state, if you look into it, where you don't have to pay property taxes. So unlike other states, Alaska doesn't have counties. What Alaska does is it's broken into boroughs. So we have, uh, where I live currently is called the Mat Matanuska Susitna Borough. It's huge. Covers almost all the way up to Denali National Park and then all the way down here to Wasilla and Palmer area. You've got the North Star Borough that's up around Fairbanks area and several other boroughs. Down in Southeast Alaska, you've got boroughs down there that cover Juneau and all the little towns. But where you, what you wanna look for is the spaces in between the boroughs. For example, Toke, where we're living now, is called an unincorporated community. It's not a town, it's not a city, it's outside of a borough, so there's no property taxes. The reason there's no property taxes is there's also no services. But what do you mean by no services? There's still, for instance, Toke and other places in Alaska have a grocery store. They have uh, all kinds of stuff. They have gas stations, they have everything you need, but they're unincorporated. In other words, the town has chosen not to be uh, incorporated into the borough. So there's a lot of opportunity in Alaska to get into an area where there's no property taxes and just your freedoms. The good old American free liberties that we expect as Americans, we still have in Alaska. You don't have somebody dictating what you can and can't do on your piece of land. You, you don't have uh, permits to have to pull and all these bureaucratic policies and procedures to follow. So there's a lot of benefits, a lot of benefits to having freedoms and liberties still here that you might not have as much down south. I've lived in Montana and Oregon, 
and Washington and a few other states. And I can tell you right now, Alaska is it for me. There's the freedoms I have up here and the feeling to be close to nature is second to none. So guys, if you're interested in purchasing land in Alaska, look into Alaska DNR's website and the land auctions, the over-the-counter sales. It's a great opportunity to pick up a piece of land without having to deal through the deal with the banking system and try to get a loan through them. And uh, good luck to you. Guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope it was informational. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Every subscriber is super welcome in our community. We are loving doing these videos for you guys. I just want people to I just want people to understand a little more about Alaska. Alaska seems to be one of those places that still I, people just don't know about it. People think we're a frozen wasteland up here living in igl igloos and, and not part of the United States. It's amazing the questions you get asked when you live up here. But guys, again, I hope you liked it and we'll see you on the next one.